Station, this is JSCPAO. How do you hear me? JSCPAO, we hear you loud and clear. Likewise, Don. A lot of questions from reporters here at uh, JSC and on our phone bridge. So we'll start off with Robert Perlman. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com and Space.com. Um, the three of you look great inside the Dragon. I wonder if you could describe your surroundings a little bit, and um, would you feel comfortable riding up in one of those in a, uh, on a future mission? Well, uh, I, I spent quite a bit of time poking around in here this morning just looking at the engineering and the layout, and I'm very pleased. It's, it looks like it carries about as much cargo as I could put in my pickup truck, and it's uh, roomier than a Soyuz, so flying up in a, a human-rated Dragon is uh, not going to be an issue. And... Uh there was a great deal of excitement down here watching uh, the berthing yesterday, the grapple and berthing. Can you describe the, um, the sense uh, aboard the space station? Did you uh, appreciate or did you have a sense of, his of the history that was being made uh, as you brought Dragon on board the uh, space station? What uh, well, we were pretty much focused on on the, the operational aspect of getting Dragon, and and I know uh, same thing when you go out for a spacewalk, and and uh, a lot of folks think, wow, isn't it this really neat? But but we're so focused on making sure we get the job done and making sure we get it done safely, and and these uh, highly operational tasks, it, it's it's not really time to sit back and, and philosophize on what happens. Now, after the fact, then you can sit around and, and think about what happened. But, but during the event, it, it's all business. This is Philip Sloss with nasaspaceflight.com. This is for Don. You ended up doing the grapple yesterday on a night pass, and I think you said on the space to ground yesterday that all the robot arm lights were out. How challenging was the nighttime grapple for you? Uh, actually, there's enough stray light reflecting from station, and with Dragon being uh, snow white, the, the visibility was, was uh, uh, quite nice. And I would not have uh, gone in and done the grapple if I couldn't have seen what I was doing. Um, the, the visibility was good from the point of view of there weren't any shadows cast, uh, which makes looking at the grapple fixture and uh, the grapple fixture target uh, easy to do. If if we would have had all the lights from the arm on, I, I'm, I think the lighting might have actually been worse in terms of casting shadows and, and making things a little harder to see. And then is there any robotics uh, upcoming this, uh, this week before you do the unbirth? Uh, no robotics involving the crew. As, as you are aware, uh, the, the robotic arm can be operated from the ground, and uh, there's a lot of routine tasks that the, that the flight controllers on the ground do with the arm, and this uh, saves crew time so that we can concentrate on doing our payload uh, uh, scientific experiments and payload operations up here. And, and during the time that Dragon is docked, uh, they've they've already walked. They're planning to walk the arm off, and they're they're going to uh, uh, translate the mobile trans the the, the mobile transporter, and they're going to be doing a number of of uh, robotic operations, and everything will be put back to where it needs to be uh, by the time uh, we do the unbirth and the release of Dragon.